set your goals and your missions from the beginning. What's going on, everybody? This is Scott, also known as Chiching King, and Melody and I are in Duluth, Minnesota. We come up here once a year for a vacation. We get away from the Texas heat. It is also a tremendous opportunity for us to go to garage sales and estate sales in a completely different area than what we're used to. This week, our entire plans went to bust. We left Texas on a Monday. By Monday night, I had a cough. By Tuesday, feeling pretty crummy, went ahead and picked up a test. And you can look right here and see how that came out. And it changed our entire plans. And it's given me a lot of time to think and evaluate what we're doing. Our entire life is built around our business. When I sit in this room, staring out of the window, watching the boats go by for five, six days now, uh, with a few more to go, it gives you a lot of time to go back and think. Number one on your business plan, you need to decide if this business works, what does my ideal life look like in three years? If my business works well, Melody and I have time to travel and we get to help people along the way. A lot of people, the more people, the better. Included in freedom is that we have financially that we're not struggling to pay for the things that we need. In order for us to get where we want to be, there's things we have to do. For us, one of those things that we need to do is we need to reduce the excess inventory that we have. That doesn't mean that I'm going to buy less. It means that I need to get it to people who can use it faster. And we have to have a process for doing that. Whether it's one person that gets it all or that we have several people that are in line to come pick it up when we have it. We need to be more consistent with what we're listing. We list currently five items a day and sometimes 10. There isn't a good reason for us to not do 10 a day. Beyond that, the next, uh, if, if phase one is for us to set our goals and our mission is to have freedom and time and to be able to give and to have enough money in the bank to make everything else work, the next step was the processes that need to be in place for us to do that. Our listing process, our shipping is down pat. We, we do a good job. I think we do as good a job with anybody. I haven't, I don't ever ship late. So those processes are good. Our inventory processes are pretty good. If I want to have the ideal business feeding the life that I want in three years, how will I measure that along the way? And you can look at that daily, weekly, monthly. And my recommendation is, is that you have some of those in place. I've already mentioned, there's not a reason for us to not be doing 10 listings a day. If our average sale price is between 50 and $75, that provides us with plenty of money to do the things that we want to do. One of the things I can check is daily, am I meeting that goal? Am I, am I listing 10 items a day at a minimum of five days a week for 50 items a week, a weekly listing total of $2,500 to $3,500? And then I can look at, am I meeting that many a month? Am I meeting that many a year? And at the end of the year, how close does that get me? Here's the next step that you need to do. If I get a month into this and I can tell that I am never meeting my daily goals, then I need to reevaluate either the process that I have in place or I need to go back and evaluate and, and, and maybe I'm doing way more than that. Maybe, maybe my goal was shy of where it should have been, but then I can go right back and adjust that goal to make sure that it's still what I want, still what Melody wants, still meets what our needs are. Those mile markers along the way help you get where you're going. There should not be major surprises if all of the other things that you put in place are working correct. You shouldn't get to the end of the three years and think, I never hit my daily goal. If you meet your daily goals, you should meet your weekly goals. And if not, you know that you're not going to. One of our original goals is that I would be able to retire from the school and that we would have enough money to make it work. We're three years in now from where we started and honestly, we're, we're way ahead of where we thought we would be. We've had more, uh, more items listed. We've had more stuff that we've given away to other resellers. And quite frankly, financially, we're in better shape than what we had pictured three years ago. So at the end of that timeline, it goes back to reevaluating and setting new goals. There are other parts of our business that because we didn't monitor them along the way, they didn't go as smoothly. We have not given away nearly as much as I would like to. We haven't moved excess inventory to where it benefits other people nearly to the rate that we could have. On the way home, 
That's the kind of things that we're going to be talking about. How can we get this stuff to other people faster? Because I think it will improve our listing. I think we'll list more if we're not tied down by the weight of all of these other things. You don't want your business to be an accident. You want to be very intentional about what happens. We didn't plan for me to get sick. I'm in a room here by myself and I'll do a quick pan around. My whole life here has been in a 10 by 12, hardly a, a jail cell. My view is pretty incredible, um, but it wasn't our plan. And we didn't plan for this at all. We didn't bring the things that would have made this easier. And, and you're not gonna be able to plan for everything, but the more things that you have planned out, the more things that you've considered, the more likely you are to be successful at it while you do this. For reselling, you're gonna to need to decide what that business looks like. What does it look like to feed your business? Can you overcome hurdles like an entire week where I'm not producing videos, I'm not listing anything, I'm not even buying anything, I've literally been sidelined for an entire week and probably longer depending upon how quickly I recover. The more of that that you plan for, the more successful your business will be. This is one of the initial stages of creating a business is to set your goals and your missions from the beginning, but they are not static. It's not meant for you to create that and then that's it forever. They're, they're a living document. You need to be able to go back to those things and improve upon them and make them fit your life. We do okay. We've done a pretty good job of it, but we have absolutely been guilty of, at times, of building our life around our business instead of building our business around our life. And that may seem like semantics, but it's not. When I'm working to make sure that the business works, instead of running the business to make sure my life works, it impacts your goals to a great degree. I have a lot of online tutorials and some of them are at the very beginning. If you think that this looks, you know, obviously you clicked on this for a reason and you're thinking about online sales or you're already involved. And even if you've been at this for 10 years, it never hurts to go back and look at your goals. How are you evaluating them? How are you adjusting to those goals? And keep that continual loop going. But if you love this kind of stuff and you think that it can be helpful to you, check out my eBay 101 right here and we'll get you started with that one too.